Welcome to the Outdoor Notebook on WJOL 1340 Will County News, Talk, Sports, and Me. I'm Joseph Meyer from One More Cast Fly Shop sitting in for Bob Machulis, who is off in a black helicopter and black limousines and Lithuanian beer and something about the president being on vacation. I'm not exactly sure why Bob is not here, but I am here, and we're going up north to the upper Mississippi River, um, up to Monticello, about 40 minutes north of the Twin Cities, to say hello to my friend Kip Veith. Kip, good morning. Good morning. Are you there? I am here. I am here. How's, oh, your, how's your weather and water up there? Uh, weather's good. Water's good. Everything's good in the beautiful north woods. So. Awesome. I have caught more big fish with Kip on the upper Mississippi River, and every time I tell my suburban friends in Chicago about fishing the upper Mississippi River, they picture me dodging um, barges and jet skis and boats full of corn and coal going down the Mississippi. Kip, tell us a little bit about the, the area that you guide. Uh, I'm 40 minutes north of uh, the Twin Cities, which sounds like it's very close to the Twin Cities. In fact, it is. But uh, you couldn't be farther away from um, the urban setting, probably. And you're, you're upstream here. of every lock and dam. Yes, we are. Uh, the last lock and dam is in downtown Minneapolis. It's uh, called Boom Island. And we are like uh, 25, probably river miles up nor- north of, of that. So uh, we're quite a ways away. The average depth of the water is probably, you know, four to five feet. So it's a very different look than you do ha- you have in downtown Minneapolis. It's, it's awesome. When I go to your website, wildwoodfloattrips.com, that's wildwoodfloattrips.com, I see that you have Western-style float trips, and you float in these goofy little boats. Can you tell us, yeah. about, tell us about the boats that you run up there? Uh, they're they're Western-style drift boats. They're just like you would find out in a Western um, river, such as like the Madison or the Yellowstone, the guides use out there. Uh, we use them here because they're probably the most effective way to fly fish even or spin fish uh, the rivers here because when it gets hot and low, uh, a regular boat, even a jet boat, has a hard time navigating the water here because it is so shallow. So that's why we use the drift boats. So except for when you've got my big fine body in your boat and the boat doesn't uh, float quite as well, we sag just a little bit. These These boats draft a couple inches of water and you can get over – some pretty shallow water, as I remember. I don't remember ever having to get out and tug that boat. No, um, it's it's probably three to four inches of water we can get through. Uh, you know, when I'm not in it, and when I'm in it, probably <laughs> four or five. So, um, yeah, it drops very very shallow water, and it's a uh, it's a great way to fish. It's very comfortable. It's kind of old school. There's no electronics. There's no uh, motor except for me. And I, just kind of float down the river and have a great day. I noticed the first time I got in your boat, there was no motor, and you mentioned that the guide rose downstream and the client rose back up. So you, yeah, well, you in cov- a perfect world, that would work. <laughs> that would happen. You cover about so. ten, eight, ten river miles a day. Yep. With, yep. with your it's guided trips. It's a nice slow, steady speed. It's pace. it's absolutely awesome fishing. Um, for the listeners, if you go to my website, onemorecast.com, on my home page, there's a picture of Kip. Um, Kip is a rather well-fed guide, holding up a rather <laughs> well-fed smallmouth, uh, and smallmouth is the ticket up there. Tell, tell, tell us about that fishery. Um, it's a it's a wonderful, wonderful fishery. It's um, I'm biased, of course, but I think it is the um, greatest, probably smallmouth river in North America. Um, and it's been said by many people that it is, but it is the premier. Um, smallmouth River, probably in the Upper Midwest, and, and one of the reasons is because of the special regs section in uh, the section that we float. It is all catch and release from everything from 12 inches to 20 inches, so those fish have a chance to grow up and, and get big. And those are the fish that we like are those those big, firm adult fish. So big, they're there for many years. Big, hard fighting fish. I notice a couple of places that we put in. That there is a sign that reads the limit for smallmouth on this section of river is one fish over 20 inches. And once a smallmouth gets to be 20 inches, he's certainly not eating size. The fishing pressure up there, Kip, seems to be, uh, to my mind, minimal. 
Yeah, I mean, if you went to the Bighorn or some of the most more famous um, rivers out west, uh, people are, your listeners might be familiar with those rivers. It can be very, very crowded here. Um, we virtually have no one on the river. If it was a trout stream and uh, and those were trout instead of smallmouth bass, you would be able to, you could walk across the river in the boats. But the secret is out. I mean, there are people, you know, more and more people doing it on their own, more pontoon boats and people buying drift boats because it is such a great way to fish it. But uh, relatively speaking, it's a pretty untapped resource. So you slide your drift boat in, uh, public launch, and tell us about a typical guide day. Um, my day or a yeah. client's day? Yeah, your, wife, your day. <laughs> well, well, I'm up, you know, cleaning the boat and getting it all ready to go probably at um, 6, 7 o'clock. We, I meet my clients either here at our, our lodge or up at a public landing, and then we're away we go. We're usually on the water by 9, hopefully earlier than that, usually 8, 39. Uh, there's no big rush to get out to the river. The afternoon bite is probably the better bite, uh, especially with the fly rod. As the water warms, the fish also warm, and they look, they're look they more willing to play in the afternoon, it seems to be. So um, we put in, and we just start fishing. Uh, we, You know, there's no hitting one spot. We just kind of work our way down the river, hitting the best or most likely spots on the way down. Tell us about those. A, Tell us about those likely spots. Are you hitting shoreline or structure, both? We're hitting, hitting both. Um, this is the time of year where it's what I call the transition time. The fish are now falling off of the bank more into mid-river structures, pills in front of riffles. That's like the area before a fast water section. They'll sit up on those pills waiting for food to come by. Uh, and still bank shooting too, but things start to change. As the water water warms, they get out of post spawn funk and they start looking for, you know, they get bigger and hungrier and they look for more oxygenated water as the water heats up. So they they tend to move into faster water. That's when they slide to the riffle. So you are sitting where in the boat and where are your clients? I'm in the middle rowing. I'm the the outboard motor, the avenue, so to speak, and then um, my clients are either ones in front of me and ones behind me and casting to the structures that hopefully are holding lots of fish and you you cater to just fly fishers or who can come aboard anyone who's uh, interested in exploring the rivers here in the midwest um, today we have four boats out and it's eight total of eight anglers and they're all from new jersey and they're all spin fishermen so we do not discriminate uh, i love having spin guys in the boat actually it makes it uh, an interesting day i can find the fish you know, if something is going on different than normally, a spin guy can kind of dig into him a little bit harder than a fly guy on some days where on some days also the fly guy has a bigger advantage than the spin person does. So Very it all depends. 